Our TV schedules are packed with programmes, it seems, about eager up-and-coming chefs competing to prove their skills are being taught everything from baking to barbecuing. But those working in the industry say the reality is really rather different. Yes, restaurant owners are warning they are in the depths of a recruitment crisis and the situation is so dire that some may have to close their doors. So are the best restaurants in Britain struggling to find the top-class chefs? Why is that? Sean Greschek is with One Kitchen in Cheshire to find out a bit more. Morning. Yes, good morning. I'm here at La Boheme uh, here in Lim. As you can see, the kitchen is already fairly busy here this morning. In just a moment, I'll be talking to the owner, Olivier. But first of all, let me take you through the numbers to prove just how big of a problem this is. When you take a look at the numbers, nearly half, so 47% of vacancies for chefs uh, were difficult to fill. That was because of a real shortage of skills. The problem is particularly bad when we take a look at London, 66% staff shortages there and 46% uh, for the whole of the southeast region. Now of course we all know that restaurants provide uh, a huge boost for tourism. The industry is worth £106 billion pounds, and that's supporting 2.6 million jobs. Well let's have a chat with Olivier that runs the restaurant here. How difficult are you finding it to recruit chefs at the moment? Well it's actually getting worse. I thought 12 months ago it couldn't get worse but it's getting worse and worse and worse. It's just very very difficult to recruit at the moment very difficult indeed. And what are you having to do then? Well I, well, I try all different kind of media, you know, and, and things, but obviously I had to go to France to get some staff, you know, working, because I can't get any staff coming through, so I had to recruit from France to get, to get the people you know, I need. Right, and I just mentioned uh, the problem with skills there. I mean, what are the sorts of things uh, that chefs, uh, uh, applicants, are having to make for you when, when they come for interview? And I know Tom's making, rustling up something lovely for us now. Yes, indeed. But I think the most important for me is to, have, to love what they're doing and have a passion. The skill, I'm here to help them, and, and I love training the staff so really what I'm looking for is somebody who's got a passion that's the only thing I'm asking even so that is a problem what's he what's Tom making for us to, uh, today he's doing a nice scallops with a fricassee of mushroom which we're gonna see that with a seriac puree so a nice Scottish uh, fresh scallop you know and so that's gonna be a really nice so we see a lot of skill going on that especially on the pan fry you know so that's that's it but uh, he's doing a good job so far I think it looks delicious and hopefully that will be uh, ready in a couple of minutes time in the meantime though uh, let's uh, talk to um, Casey Mello who runs uh, an agency uh, that provides temporary chefs to restaurants uh, and also uh, Stephen Smith who is head chef uh, at a top uh, pub in Whizzle and um, Katie um, for you um, just how big of a problem is this at the moment it's a huge problem. It's something that we see um, every day. We struggle to find chefs as well. Um, it's we, So many people are using interim chefs to um, solve the problem, really. And how temporary are these temporary chefs? Um, well, actually, it's quite long term. The majority of our contracts last at least a month. Um, possibly up to six months time. We've got chefs who've been with clients for over a year, so it's, it, you know, it's long term. And you're saying you're up 40% compared to last year, which really shows just how big of an issue this is. Absolutely. I mean, we've been recruiting interim chefs for 25 years, but over the past year, we've really seen a massive increase in the demand for interim chefs. And why do you think this is? What's at the heart of the problem? Well, when we speak to chefs and ask them why um, they struggle to come out of the industry, in, in the industry, it's because of the work life balance that they really struggle with. It's long hours um, and they're not necessarily getting paid for every hour that they work. Right, well, let's talk to a head chef. Uh, Stephen, would you agree with that? Uh, work life balance is probably one of the things that, that, that's, that's really causing this problem. Yeah, it's certainly the, the biggest problem. But, uh, you know, we all know that to create good restaurants and, and consistent restaurants, so unfortunately, that comes part of the job. Um, and, and, and until we, we, you know, we tackle that, it's going to be very, very difficult. So work-life balance is, is ultimately the reason being. All right, Stephen, well, uh, thank you very much indeed for the time being, and, and thanks to Katie. And uh, let's just uh, catch up with Tom there, who is just finishing off uh, that breakfast. Uh, plenty to talk about throughout the morning. When we come back in about an hour's time, we'll be talking about how these chefs here feel that the issue can be tackled later on this week. Uh, ten top chefs are going to be meeting to talk about training. Oh, thank oh. you very much. Scallops and mushrooms for breakfast. Yeah, can always smell them from here. Mm. Lovely.